classical theory of output and employment. Who were these classical economists who believed in classical assumptions? Uh, for example, Ricardo, Adam Smith, Say, all of these economists, they believed in, believed in classical assumptions. I'll be telling in detail about the classical assumptions, but right now, the major thing which they believed was, is in full employment, right? So what do you mean by full employment, basically? This is what your full employment is. Well, full employment is that it is like a situation in which all of those who want to work at a given wage rate will get work. Suppose you and I are able-bodied persons and we are also willing to work. There is a given wage rate and in real life there is no surety that will whether we are going to get the job or not at that given wage rate but supposedly if there is a surety that at the given wage rate there will always be a job available to you then that situation is a full employment situation right you and i cannot so you and i means i mean both of us are workers and we cannot affect the wage rate in whatever way what is it that we can do is that we can offer our services right so by offering our services by offering our labor and not only us all of the persons who are able-bodied and who are willing to work at a given wage rate will get work okay and such a situation is called full employment right so we'll have to talk in detail about these these concepts later on also so just just keep certain things in head before we move on well what does this say it says full employment will be that situation in which all of those who want to work at a given wage rate will get work right it means that there is no involuntary unemployment that there is no involuntary unemployment whatsoever right so there is a full employment situation there is a full employment situation and you are saying in such a situation there is no involuntary unemployment what do you mean by involuntary unemployment involuntary unemployment is you are you are unemployed not because of your choice if you have a choice and you are employed you are unemployed it means that this is a voluntary unemployment and when will that happen it will happen if you are not ready to work at a given wage rate and you are an able-bodied person you are not ready to go work at a given wage rate so by choice you are unemployed here in this case so this full employment is that situation in which there is no involuntary unemployment so that choice variable has been completely wiped out of the system is that right so there is no involuntary unemployment at all in the classical system that's what they believed in since we have talked about involuntary unemployment so let's also talk something about voluntary unemployment and what is the distinction between them. well the the main thing which you'll have to worry about is that this is persons who are fit to work okay persons who are fit to work means persons who are physically and mentally fit to work right so we are talking about such persons who are physically and mentally fit to work and those people who are physically and mentally fit to work they are willing to work at the given wage rate at the given wage rate is that right so absolutely there is no element of choice which is given to you clear and in such a scenario when there are fit people who are physically and mentally fit and they are willing to work at the at the given wage rate i'm again and again repeating this word at the given wage rate at the given wage rate 
because it has a meaning attached to it at the given wage rate. You cannot change this wage rate at all. And since you cannot change this wage rate at all, and you are still out of the job, you are willing to work at that give, at that wage rate, but you are still out of the job, it means that it can only happen when aggregate demand is insufficient, right? There's an insufficient aggregate demand, okay? So in case if people are not demanding goods, then why are producers going to supply anything, right? So at that rigid money wage, there is an excess supply of labor. You get the point. I mean, there are so many concepts which have been introduced to you in the first class itself. But I mean, everything will start making sense. Just listen to it very carefully. We started by saying that there is a full employment situation, right? This full employment situation means that the people who are willing to work and they are physically and mentally fit, they are willing to work at the given wage rate. They will always get the work. It means that the economy is at full employment. And at that situation, there is absolutely nothing like involuntary unemployment. Involuntary is what is not voluntary. What is not by the choice. Okay. So there won't be any involuntary unemployment <clears throat> in case of full employment. But if you were able-bodied, that is, you are physically and mentally fit and you are willing to work at the given wage rate. But if you are still out of the job, you are still not getting the work, it is only possible if aggregate demand is insufficient, right? If aggregate demand is insufficient. And in case if aggregate demand is insufficient, that would mean that demand is less than supply, right? That is, you know what, when you say that aggregate demand is insufficient, so it means that at that given wage rate, at that given wage rate, there is an excess supply of labor. There are, there are more people who would want to work at that given wage rate, but they are not getting the work. Why? Because there's not sufficient demand in the market, right? And if there are, if there is not a sufficient demand in the market, then why will employers demand labor? They will not be demanding labor. Even if you are willing to work at the given wage rate, employers will not demand labor. Right. And this will create unemployment. In case if I am the employer, you are the employee or you are the worker, you are willing to work, you are able bodied, you are physically and mentally fit, you are willing to work at the given wage rate. But my demand, I am not getting enough demand for my product. So in case if I am not getting enough demand for my product, why will I ever employ you? Even though you are willing to work at the given wage rate, I will not employ you. So this will create an excess supply of labor in equilibrium. Is that clear? The other point is that this will create a situation of underemployment. Clear? This will create a situation of underemployment. I'll talk about these concepts in detail later on, but I'm just uh, picking up different things at the same time. So. How will you distinguish this case with the voluntary unemployment? Voluntary unemployment is you are able-bodied, you are physically and mentally fit, but you are not willing to work at the given wage rate because you think the wages are low, right? In case of the wages are low, you will say, fine, I'm not going to work at this wage rate. And if you are not going to work at this wage rate, this will also create a situation of unemployment in the market. But such an unemployment is called voluntary unemployment. So when you are unemployed by your own choice, it is a voluntary unemployment. And what is your choice? The choice is that this job is not according to me. I'm not getting the enough wages. Uh, this, this job is not matching my educational qualifications. So I will not pick up this job. So all of this is voluntary unemployment, right? And this is not included in labor force. Clear? So we have, we have, define two things just define it just define it we will also have to talk in detail about unemployment and inflation in the in the in the later topic but i've just defined it for you what is a voluntary and, and involuntary unemployment so what does this mean it means that that classical economists they denied completely the existence of involuntary unemployment 
So there is absolutely nothing like involuntary unemployment in the classical system. Involuntary unemployment, I'm again and again telling